So one of the really interesting parts about Brain Pop is an activity that you can see right underneath Creative here, Coding, which is called Creative Coding. And this is a great activity if you're looking for students to start to maybe explore with block-based code on topics that you might already assign them in Brain Pop. So here's a great example. This is a movie about Dr. Seuss. Uh, what I can do as the teacher is I can assign a number of these different activities to my students. If you don't know how, I created another video, which you should see on the screen right here. But after I do that, one of the options that you have for another activity is a creative coding activity. And this will be based on the content that you share in BrainPop. Any lesson that you can look up, you should be able to find a creative coding project. So I'm going to select creative coding. This will come up and it's going to give me three different examples. Now these are all based on Brain Pop Jr. If you go to Brain Pop, there's a few different options that you have, but all of these are based in Scratch and there's three different choices that you have. So I'm going to show you the first one, which is probably the easiest one to get started with, and that is the museum. So the directions are very simple. All we're doing is coding a digital museum to show what students understand about Dr. Seuss. So once we start, there's a few different ways to get started. If you just go ahead and click the show me, it will walk you through each one of the steps. So that's something that's very helpful. You'll, something else that might be helpful is right up here at the top if you click on this question mark. It's a video that will walk you through museum coding project. Let's you this project with it being the coding museum project. So it's really easy. If you've never done Scratch before, it's all block-based codes that you can drag and, and move from the left to the right. You can add different characters, that kind of thing. So basically, here's how this is going to work. The commands are to the left. These are all different actions that we can create when we drag right over here to this section in the middle. We have our characters right over here. If I click on Moby down here, you'll notice that this is completely blank and that's because there's no code or there's no commands on him yet. If I click on Annie, you'll notice that this is telling me that once I click on the start button, which is right over here, she's going to say, welcome to my museum for two seconds. And then the second part, click on any item to learn more about it. So let's see how this looks now. There it is. Okay. So we get an idea of how this is going to work. So now let's remember this assignment. The assignment was show what you know about Dr. Seuss by coding a digital museum. So the first thing I'm going to do is this is a digital museum and it's about Dr. Seuss. I'm going to start by just getting rid of Moby because he's not necessarily re relevant to this assignment. So I'm just going to select on Moby and I'm going to get rid of him. I'm going to keep Annie for this project because I want her to kind of introduce things, but I'm just going to move her off to the side and I'm going to add other sprites on the shelf to help tell me one fact about Dr. Seuss. To do that, you'll see right on the right hand side, it says add. So I'm going to click add. And what's great about Brain Pop is it's going to take the images from the movie, in this case, the Dr. Seuss movie, and put them all in the top of the search results. Of course, if I wanted specific things, I could also search by keyword or just by scrolling down and adding some different things on here. But I'm going to select this first picture frame. Once your picture frame is up, unfortunately you can't click on it and make it bigger, but what you can do is change the size. I'm gonna change this from 40 to 60. Kind of move him over here. Okay, and now what I need to do is add some code. Remember before when we click on Annie, she introduces this. She says to click on some items. So when people click on this item, I want the fact to be told about Dr. Seuss. So I'm just going to select my sprite. I'm going to choose when this sprite is clicked. This says, say hello for two seconds. And I'm just going to change that to one fact about Dr. Seuss. So when this sprite is clicked, say, Dr. Seuss's real name was Theodore Seuss Geisel. Okay, that's finished. So now, again, let's try to preview or debug this digital museum. I'm going to start by clicking start. 
Okay, and he says that, click on any item to learn more about it. If I click right up here on the picture frame, there we go, he says it. Now I can change this, that's not too long, but if it was a couple sentences long, I could change this from two to four seconds. The other thing that I can do also is add a sound, right? So let's use that brain pop sound, which should be this one, right over here. Okay, we're gonna try that again. Again, Annie is going to introduce the Digital Museum. I'm going to select my picture. Four seconds. And then there's the pop afterwards. So basically, I'm just going to replicate this again. I'm going to add another sprite. I'm going to choose Cat in the Hat. Again, when this sprite is clicked, say, and I'm just going to write a sentence, and I'm just going to say the cat in the hat Okay, the cat in the hat was one of Dr. Seuss's most famous books. Same thing, we'll do that brain pop, pop. And I'm just gonna move our cat in the hat maybe right over here, make it a little bit bigger again. I'll just say 60 again, so it's similar. All right, you'll notice that when I click, it's kind of previewing how that's going to look when my regular user does it. And I'm just gonna do the same thing. Let's add one more. Um, I'll just use these books. Okay, add my books. When the when this sprite is clicked, being the books, say he wrote many books. Okay, again, we can do a pop. Now, one of the things that you may want to experiment is by loading more blocks. Okay, this will give you options to add things. So let's just try one. I'm going to just separate this. This time, what's going to happen is when you click on that sprite with the books, I'm going to change that size by 10, that's fine, and we'll play a sound. All right, so you can see our code is right over here. First, what's going to happen is when we click on Annie, click on the green flag, she's going to introduce our museum. When I click on any item, whether it's Dr. Seuss or the cat in the hat or the books, um, it's going to tell us one fact about Dr. Seuss. It's going to make that brain pop pop in the case of the books. The last thing it's going to do is to change the size a little bit. So let's see our digital museum that we coded. One of the things you can do is make this full screen as well to get a bigger view. Okay, let's start by, stop. Let's start by clicking on the green flag. Annie introduces our museum. And now I'm going to click on one item. Okay, we've got that one with our pop. There's our cat in the hat icon. And then finally our books. Now this is the one that should change in size by 10. There we go. I don't know if you noticed, but it got a little bit bigger. So that's essentially it. So it doesn't matter if it's Dr. Seuss or it's a different topic in Brain Pop or Brain Pop Junior. If you're given the option for creative coding with Scratch and you choose the Digital Museum, this is exactly how it's going to work. For students, they have the option to submit this to you as the teacher and you can view and score it. Now, unfortunately, there's not a way that you can easily share this as a link where everyone can click on. The best you can probably do is share this to the whole entire class. So let's take a look at how that, that might work. So I'm at my Brain Pop dashboard. I'm going to click on this one, Dr. Seuss Activities. You can see that I have three of these finished. So what I might want to do is click this View Work button. You'll notice at the bottom that I said, great job. I gave this eight out of 10. And this is the example of the student work, which was submitted. What I could then do for my whole class is go to full screen, maybe show this to the entire class if we're all in the same room, or maybe even just do a quick um, screen recording. Again, unfortunately, there is no way that you can send this as a link. But that's pretty much it. Um, if you're looking for a quick and easy activity to introduce code into your classroom for a topic that's relevant, as opposed to just introducing code because um, it's an interesting thing to do, then I definitely check out using the creative coding options from BrainPop. <laughs>